What is going on guys? My name is Michael and welcome back to another Rise Media tutorial. Need you to keep me close. Welcome back guys, hope everybody is doing all right. Today we're gonna to be going over custom workspaces in Premiere Pro. Gonna show you guys how to change your own layout so that you're comfortable with the interface. So let's jump right in. So for most of you guys, you're probably at this interface stage right now, which is the editing tab. It's pretty much the default for Premiere Pro, especially for those who are just opening the app for the first time. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I wanna go through all these on the top and then I'm gonna show you guys how to customize them individually. So let's start with assembly. So assembly is really good. It's a really good layout for when you're starting your projects. Um, it's going to open up the project panel and it's going to be massive. So it's going to be really easy to see what you're importing. Um, and it really helps you organize your stuff, keep it neat and clean, which is very important when you're starting out a project. I usually don't use this. I actually do all of mine in one, which I'll show you guys later. But assembly is very good for starting out um, importing media and staying organized that way. So the next panel you'll see up top is the editing tab. This is pretty much the default for Premiere Pro. You'll see a lot of people who start out use this, but how I know people who have been in the software for years now and they still use this tab. Um, it's very good. It's probably the best all around for, you know, whatever point of the project you are. Uh, I see a lot of people use it because it fits nicely on the laptop, but definitely recommend editing, guys. This is probably your go-to. If you don't want to make a custom layout, this is this is basically what you go to. And yeah, I really like the size of each of the panels. I think it works well. I even use this sometimes. So guys, I definitely recommend this layout for anybody who's unsure what they should do. All right, so the next tab up here is the color tab. And a lot of people use this. Um, I actually really like the way they have this laid out. My color tab is pretty similar to this. But yeah, this is basically just to do your coloring. So they're gonna put in the Lumetri scopes, the Lumetri color panel, and this is basically Premiere's you know, in software coloring system. So this layout is probably gonna work best for you. I haven't found one that works too much better, but this layout is pretty much the best you're gonna find in Premiere uh, to work with color. It makes the program monitor a lot bigger, which is good because you really wanna see you know, your image a lot clearer, see what the coloring is, do during, is doing to it, see what um, all your effects are doing and manipulating the color individually. So you wanna see what the image is gonna look like. The timeline, I'm not too worried about. I'm okay with it being smaller because it's not as big uh, of importance as seeing what your image is doing. So I really like this layout. I do use it sometimes for coloring. Again, I'll show you my coloring, which is roughly similar to this, a little bit different, but I really like what they have going here as the default setting. All right, on to the next tab. We're gonna go to audio. Guys, I'm gonna be honest, I never use this. I've never used this in my life. I'm sure it's great for audio, so if you're big on either um, creating big soundtracks, you know, mixing sound effects together, creating, audio or songs with sound effects, you know, anything related to audio, if you're big on that, this is probably gonna be the panel for you, at least to mix your audio together. Um, so I would definitely suggest testing it out. You know, I really haven't, so I can't really say much on that matter, but definitely try it out and see if it works for you. All right, now onto the effects. Um, this is gonna be uh, kinda helpful if you're big on your special effects. You know, you got your effects panel up here by itself, which is, which is good. You got your effects control panel, which is gonna be pretty much the biggest panel on your screen, which is where you're gonna be doing all your keyframing, stuff like that. So if you really are big on your special effects, this is probably a good tab for you. It's gonna give you a lot of real estate to work with keyframing and stuff like that, and a nice big panel to see what your effects are. So yeah, definitely suggest this if you're big on special effects, stuff like that. I don't use it, but you guys can give it a try. So the next panel up top is the titles panel. Um, I don't usually work in this. Actually, I never work in this. Um, mainly because I never put titles in my projects anyways. But if you're big on titling, this is actually a really cool panel. It's gonna give you a lot of the shortcuts over here on the side for legacy titling. If you aren't big on titling, I suggest you don't use this because it's pretty much pointless since it's dedicated more or less to doing titling. If you were just to you know edit normally and you wanna pop a title in, this is my workflow. I usually just go to File, New, Legacy Title, and that's gonna open up this window right over here where basically you're gonna have all the things that you would have in that sidebar 
that was in titling. So it's just a few extra steps to get here, but it's not big if you don't do a lot of titling and you don't want that panel over there in the first place. So this is what I do, you know, type in whatever you want, uh, change the font to whatever, you know, add a bold to it, whatever. So when you're done with this, you're just gonna close the panel. There's no saving it, you're just gonna close it and it's gonna pop up as a new layer in your project panel. And what you'll do with that is just drag and drop it into your timeline sequence. And then, you know, you can do whatever you want, manipulate it in here. And that's kind of my workflow for titles. I'm not big on titles, so I never work in that titles panel. But if you are, and that's what you're dedicated to, or even at the end of the project, if you just want to solely focus on titles when you're done all the cutting, you know, work in that panel. It's really great. It works well. Um, but again, I don't use it. And let's move on. So to graphics, again, this is another panel that is big if you're doing specific stuff in graphics. So like they have some cool stuff over here, like basic lower thirds if you want to do titling effects, stuff like that, some graphic overlays. Even like this sports package is pretty cool. Like if you're just trying to do some graphics in with this sports intro, I mean, I don't even know what this does, but let's test it out. Okay, oh, there we go. Just set it to frame size real quick. So let's just play this. Yeah, so this is like some cool sports intro. Um, you know, I'm probably never going to use it, but if you want to use it, there it is. Uh, <laughs> so this is the graphics page. It's going to give you a bunch of options to do like some cool graphics that they put in here. Anyways, I don't use that stuff, so let's move on. All right, so let's just go back to editing real quick, and this is where the fun stuff comes in. So basically, you have your layout, okay, and let's say you want to change just a little bit it a little bit of it well what's special about premiere and i think why a lot of people are attracted to premiere is because you can literally manipulate anything you want as far as workspaces go whereas in other programs you probably can't do as much so what you're going to do is you're going to come up to the top wherever you want let's say i want to switch around effect controls i don't like that it's with source monitor or audio or all this other stuff and i want it in its own panel so what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to come up to the tab, press down, drag this wherever you want. So let's say I want effect controls by itself to the right of the program monitor. I'm going to come down over here and just drop it and it's going to be its own panel. So this switch to audio mixer, don't worry, it, it sometimes just changes it, but it was on the source monitor. But anyways, it's going to come and make its own panel, which is super, super neat. And now I can basically change whatever I want in here. So down here, we have the effects panel somewhere in here. But I don't really like the fact that it's hidden and I want it to come out and be its own panel because I'm going to use it a lot and frequently. So I'm going to go and find it, go to the tab, press down, and let's just say I want it to the left of the, my timeline. Just literally drag it over here, drop, and now it's going to be over here. Now I don't, I would never do that. I don't like the way this looks because it makes my timeline super, super small and hard to work with. But you guys can just keep fidgeting around with it and finding a place for it until you find the spot that works for you. And this is what really attracts a lot of people to Premiere is because you can literally customize it however you want. And basically it's going to suit whatever, you know, makes you comfortable. And that's important. Now, the one thing I will say about changing your workspaces is there is no command Z. So you can't just, you know, go back a step when you change your layout, the one thing you will have to do is basically just start all over from the beginning. So let's just say you made a bunch of changes and you're like, you know what, I actually like the original better. Um, I don't want this layout that I just made. You can't go to color, come back because it'll stay the same and you're getting really frustrated. You're like, oh, I want the original back. Well, it's very simple. Instead of doing Command Z, which you cannot do, you just come up, right click on editing and go to reset to save the layout. Now, let's just say you really like the workspace you did and you're like, hell, I wanna keep this for, you know, ever. And this is what I wanna work in every time I come in here. Well, the good thing about Premiere is that you can actually save this layout in the same tab. So you come up to editing again, you right click and you go to save as new workplace. Open up that tab, name it. I'll just name it tutorial. Okay, and now this is a save layout. It's gonna be on your bar up here as whatever you named it. Let's just say you want your um, custom workspace to be in the front of all these in the panel. Well, you can't just hold down and drag it across. You actually have to right click, 
go to edit workspaces and this window is going to pop up where you basically are going to drag it here. So tutorial, I want it to be in the front, drag it to the top and then go to OK. So that's one way to get it there. Um, let's just say you want to delete one of these. There's too many up here for you. Uh, you know, I really don't want titles. I think it's a, a, a shitty layout or I don't want audio. I think it's a shitty layout. I want to get rid of it. Um, I'm going to right click, edit workspaces, go to audio, select it, and just press delete. Now, I'm not going to delete it because I want it to stay there, but that is how you would delete um, either a workspace that was a default one or one that you made that you no longer like. So I'm going to go to tutorial, delete it. I don't like that one. Um, so come up here, press delete, and it'll be gone and off my timeline up here. So now I'm going to go over really quick one more thing before I go into mine is let's just go back to this editing tab and of course it's saved but I just want to reset that because remember I deleted it, I hated it, reset back to my original and we're good. So one thing I will say is that let's say I really like this layout but I want one more thing. You know, I, I really like this layout but it doesn't have any color. You know, I wish I could kind of blend these two together. I really want it. Well, there actually is a way to do that. You're going to come up to window and then you're going to have all of these things or all these panels that are available to be selected. So all the ones with check marks are the ones you obviously already have here. And so let's just go over, let's say effects, you have effects down here. Let's just say effect controls, you have it up there. Everything that's checked is what you have already selected and it's in here somewhere. But I want color, so I want to bring in Lumetri color. You just come down, again, it's window workspace, I'm sorry, not window workspace, it's window, come down to the bottom, and they're all going to be here, all the panels that are available to you. So I want color, I'm going to select it, and it's going to pop in for me on the right side, and now I'm super happy because I kind of blended editing and color together to make my super layout. And so this is really, really neat, guys. I want to add, let's just say I want to add... You know, I want to add the scopes too because I want to really get in and fix the color correction. So there it is. You know, it's really, really cool what you can do with this. There's endless possibilities. And that's why I really, really like creating custom workspaces in Premiere. Now let's go over mine. I'll show you guys briefly what I do and why I do it. Most of the time, I'm on the go. I'm working on my laptop. And I really, really like a big timeline by itself so that I have this whole bar on the bottom that I can work and it's a lot of real estate. I can see what's going on. Now, I will say that I am constantly shifting these based on what I need at the time. So if I'm just starting a project, I'm gonna move this so that it's a lot bigger. I can see the media that I'm importing, stuff like that. When I'm done with importing my media, I'm really just gonna close this off, make it really small, maybe the, open the effects a little bit more. I, honestly, I have it like this sometimes, so you can't even see it. Um, and that's just how I work. That's just the workflow because I'm basically going to manipulate the size of each box based on what I'm doing at the time. So this is generally my go-to layout for editing on the go. As you can see, I really don't have a lot open. I only have very specific stuff for each panel open because I don't need all that other garbage. I like to keep it simple, like to keep it to what I work with. And one big thing that I'll also say is I like to keep my effect controls bigger than smaller because this is where I do a lot of the keyframing and I like a lot of real estate. And to see what I'm doing, it's a lot easier to get smooth curves and stuff like that when the panel is bigger. Now, let's just go into coloring real quick. This is pretty much the same as the color tab. It's a little bit different because I have effects down here and I think in the other one it's project. I'm not 100%. So you can correct me on that, but I really like the way I have this laid out. And if you notice right away from my editing to my coloring, the program monitor is massive. And this is huge for me because I really, really like to see what I'm doing, to see what the effects I'm putting on the clips have to the image. And I need it to be big to see that clearly. I don't mind that the timeline is small, like I said before, because I'm really, you know, usually going to be working on one clip at a time. So I'll just go to the clip zoom in and work on that clip. Now the elect the Lumetri panel on the side is pretty much essential for me because this is where I'm going to be adding in all of my LUTs, stuff like that. 
um, doing my, some of my corrections. And then effects is also important. I have it out because I like to use the RGB curves effect, um, which I'll just drag into my effect controls up here and do that over there. So this is a really nice coloring format that I've found that works for me. But you know what, guys? There's a ton of stuff out there. Find what works for you. Um, find your own layout because that's the only way that you're going to feel comfortable. You can switch it to whatever you want. That is the beauty of Premiere Pro and creating custom workspaces. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We have tutorials coming out on Thursdays and Saturdays, so please continue to check in, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.